Today I'll be taking the time to talk to two actual indie game devs, who are currently in the midst of making their own movement FPS instagib game called Cicada. It's in a very early state at the moment, but they gave me a code to play on their current build. I decided to ask some questions that would be super useful to my own game dev journey, as well as anybody looking to make games of their own. This interview is with two very good friends of mine, Matthew and Mason. Matthew is currently holding a full-time job while working on this project, and Mason does freelance art for people like me. I left timestamps for certain questions you might find interesting, but without further ado, here's how that conversation went. P.S. Subscribe, because we're close to 5,000. All right. Hello. I'm here with Matthew and Mason. Wait, which is, who's who? Howdy. I'm red. Uh, You're red. I'm Matthew. Matthew is red. Mason is blue. And then I have it on the... Discord overlay, um, Mason is the, the little bird, and Matthew's the little cat, and I'm, no, wait, no, I'm the cat, I'm the real cat, and Matthew's the, the drawn cat. The one from <laughs> Kiki's Delivery Service. Oh, that's what it's from, okay. Yeah, I forget his name. I forgot, too. Alright, well, um, let's get started. Um, what is both of your, like, backgrounds as game developers? Like, have you guys done anything before like jumping into making a game have you done any mods you want to go first mason or you want me to uh you can go first um i kind of got my start um with tf2 and making maps for it a long time ago we used to play uh competitive tf2 with larry here that's me long time ago yeah <laughs> dude i have like 2600 um, <laughs> hours and these guys probably have more than me yeah, to be fair, mine because of editing the maps and stuff, it's it's you know it's, it's a ton. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so it started off with editing TF2 maps. That really got me into just understanding the side of like how games work in general and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and then about two years ago, decided to just start start learning how to code and everything, and and making my own games instead of just making maps for TF2. So. Uh huh. And so was it like, how hard was it to, to learn, learn code from scratch and then like implement it into a game? I mean, you can just oh, give me a been, scale. Uh, you don't have to like, tell me the details just yet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's it, pretty tough actually. It's, I, I think I've mentioned to Larry before, but like e really easy in some ways that I didn't expect, but way harder in other ways that I just didn't expect at all. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And Mason, what about you? What kind of background do you do you get? Um, I've been doing 3D art since 2019. Initially, I was wanting to do um, illustration and um, like splash art type stuff, stuff for card card games specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went to, well, I guess probably don't want that in the video. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to dox myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I started good. going to a started going to a pseudo mm -hmm. art school. It wasn't great, but it was you know kind of cheap and still went nearby. Uh huh. The only one with like a, a game art program uh, in Arkansas. So I went there for a bit. And in the animation course, there was an introduction to 3D, which I hated at first because it was all poly modeling. Um, and what is that? Uh, that is the, it, it's kind of an archaic way of, of making things in a 3D space almost. It's what like Disney Pixar was doing a long time ago. Initially, mm -hmm. that's how you see shit in like Toy Story One. It's all just poly modeled with subdivision. Oh, I, um, I see. Okay. Uh, so you get like you can go really detailed with it, but it's it's a lot more tedious than say ZBrush, which um, they introduced us to that, and I fell in love with sculpting immediately. Mm. Um, okay. And so I pushed my direction towards three D. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I've been. And you've also focusing done a lot of my time on. You've you've also done freelance work too. I mean, um, for those who don't know, this dude is my thumbnail artist. <laughs> like, Hi. I uh, a anytime you've seen a a like three D render of a Lethal Company guy, 
nine times out of ten, it's from this guy. So yeah, I ripped those from Sketchfab. Let's go. Let's go. I still haven't found the, a better quality model. I mean, it's fine. I I like it because yeah. it's sim it's simple, and I don't like the mm -hmm. overly like realistic ones. Um, I wasn't really looking for realistic. I was mostly looking just one that wasn't the worst looking thing ever to look at <laughs> yeah because it, it's, it's a really rough model uh, i think it's yeah. from the gpu i don't think it's the actual um the actual in game yeah i don't think it's the actual mm. game model yeah yeah i mean it's just hard like posing that kind of stuff like if i wanted to start that and i know people that I have like started blender just for the purpose of like making thumbnails and stuff <laughs> i mean you have like thousands of hours on them so i would rather just have you do it <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, now that obviously we've been playing this game in the background, this is the game that they've been working on. But I wanted to ask. Uh, so both of them are working on this game conjointly right now. Project name is Cicada. But what is your vision for this game? Can you explain what we're even doing here? <laughs> yeah. So probably the the simplest way to boil it down. Um, for for anyone who's played Rats Instagib, oh, yeah. um, something something real similar to that. Mm -hmm. um, but we're wanting to get a little more creative with it and kind of you know make something a little more unique in the way the guns work. Um, but the goal for now is just to end up with an Instagib game. Um, for those of you not aren't familiar, it's you know you you end up, you have a rifle that can one shot on a headshot, and then and we, you know we have a rocket launcher in here as well that yeah. lets you have some movement. Um, and that's pretty much the whole game, right? You you know, kind of typically first to a number of kills, wins, and then mm -hmm. and then it's over. So kind of kind of wanting to get just like something working together, and then and then we'll decide how we want to expand on it or if we want to expand on it right. once we get to that point. So, so from my from my understanding, you're kind of just getting all the bare bones down, and then I feel like as soon as you can get mechanics down, and this is just from my own observation, then I feel like the rest will kind of fall in place now. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it's just stuff that'll take time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, Mason's working on a lot of the, the art side of it, which isn't in the game yet, because, you know, we've been working yeah. on this for a couple months so far, really, and, like, technically he could have had stuff in engine so far, but it would have been, like, really rough stuff that we just, you know, we yeah. didn't bother with importing it yet. Yeah, so um, you're seeing the mighty beans right now, but this is not at all the final <laughs> the final product. This is just kind yeah. of a placeholder. And, like, the uh, you can see there's rectangles on the front of people. I, I played this game, and I've talked to them before, so this isn't, like, a first time. So the rectangles on the front is, like, their face, and then, obviously, the little orange square is the gun, so you can at least just tell where they're <laughs> facing. There's small little mm -hmm. things like that that I that that's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, just I just wanted because it, it, at first I didn't have the, the anything showing the direction people were facing, and I was like, this is so confusing to play because mm -hmm. you just couldn't tell. I never realized how much while playing a game how important it was to know the direction the player was facing. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and, and you know it. We're thinking if we do want to expand it past an Instagib game, probably arena shooter is the direction we'll want mm -hmm. to go. Um, it's kind of been a game genre that I've enjoyed a lot in the past. Me um, too. Yeah. Very fun. Uh, yeah. It does give me a lot of, I, I feel like there's a lot of TF2 inspiration, obviously, uh, and Quake inspiration because, you know, who doesn't love a railgun and who doesn't love a rocket launcher and <laughs> exactly. rocket jumping too. I mean, both those games have that and it's such a core core part of the game but mixing it with instagram is like a pretty interesting take so i'm always excited to see where this goes and hopefully when i get like further enough in my career i can help you guys out too with some of the coding and stuff it'd be it would be a lot of fun oh yeah i'm excited for that yeah um so i guess the next question would be what so far and for both of you has been the part of the development process that has given you the biggest headache. Ooh, uh, Mason, do you have anything to really give for this? You can kind of yes. talk about um, design stuff. So for me, I most of my uh, experience is working from concepts mm -hmm. and not actually creating concepts for what characters or models or guns or whatever will be. Right. Um, and so I'm really stretching my brain trying to concept out things whenever my 2d art skills aren't amazing and mm -hmm. 3d concepting is 
uh, I don't know, uh, what's the word for it? Not dumb, but just like, it's a little silly sometimes. It, okay. uh, it takes longer than than just sketching something down really quick in 2D. Um, right. And um, a little more involved to yeah, get basic involved. shapes out. Mm -hmm. So you're just like creating a 3D. Like, uh, are you creating like a player model? Is that what we're talking about? Uh, yeah. Right now, I'm working on the main player model, which uh -huh. is going to be um, just like a little robot guy. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to make decisions on it that'll make it feel like it's unique but not too unique in the fact that it's going to be um like a deathmatch mode and we're all going to be the same character oh um, i see so i don't want it to feel like too much of an individual character right i don't want it to be a like a rainbow uh, six type of deal or something like that yeah, yeah 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 um so i'm trying to strike that balance with the design mm -hmm. um and also uniquely generic. Yeah, uniquely <laughs> unique in its design, but not unique in the gameplay. I right. Guess. And so you're kind of just like building this from scratch now. Yeah. Yeah. That's the hard part because I think that, uh, and I don't know about Godot, but I know the other uh, engines utilize like you can kind of just pay for assets and stuff like that, uh, like player models and things like that so you're kind of just not going that route you want to build it from the ground up um i, I think you could purchase things for godot i mean it wouldn't be like directly importable but you could uh definitely convert it mm -hmm. to an importable format um definitely be a lot of cleanup for that yeah um but also i just want to like i want to make it you know like that's that's one of my big interests right now is just making little guys in 3d mm -hmm. um so there's design which is the headache and then i'm not big on environment art um i haven't done much of that mm -hmm. um but matthew's done a decent amount yeah so we'll be collaborating on that i have i have played matthew's old tf2 maps and they're actually beautiful <laughs> like <laughs> i i mean i've played like i was actually one of your play testers like way back when you first made um Mm -hmm. uh what was that map your pipe cp you're probably map. thinking of propaganda propaganda yeah that was yeah. fun i got to play mm -hmm. test that and exploit it nitpick it and like oh, you <laughs> yeah. can stand on this rail but you can't you can't shoot through it or some or like you can shoot through it you know just stupid stuff like that <laughs> yeah I, I i i always appreciate the stupid stuff i i like nitpicks yeah i mean you kind of have to when you're making a game right like you gotta yeah. take everything to into account. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Any any little unfun thing that happens for the player is just it's a negative experience and another reason for the player not to boot up the game the next time. Exactly, yeah. And so, what was like your biggest headache working with uh, this game? Ooh, um. <laughs> so originally, this game was going to be an Unreal Engine because we we both really like to lean into the, the art side of things, and Unreal Engine is really good on the art side of things. Mm -hmm. Godot will be a little more of a challenge. Um, but uh, my dumbass could not get Steam functioning easily without really digging into C plus plus and Unreal Engine, and I just uh... did not feel like really digging into the. The Steamworks SDK in C++. So I was able to find some some existing libraries in like C Sharp and stuff that work alongside. Uh, I think they were originally made for Unity, but I was able to, you know, it's the same coding language. So I was able to kind of make them work for this engine. So mm -hmm. it was still kind of, you know, having to go around and, and do some really weird nitty gritty stuff. But it wasn't C++ at least. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I'm a little, I won't say frightened, but yeah, I do know how to code, and I think I, I learned a little bit of C here and there. Um, I tried learning C once, and I was like, oh, this is so much easier than Java. Why didn't I ever like learn this or something like that? Because <laughs> Java is like, you have there's just more steps involved from what I know. Um, but um so yeah piggybacking off of that like how hard is it to write code and actually like see stuff happen and change on the screen 
Uh, does Godot have any like built-in tools for that? Like, how hard was it to just sit in front of the console and write code? <laughs> um, Godot is a pretty easy engine to pick up and use. Um, I had a little bit of practice with it before this project, like six or seven months ago, just kind of making a, a little little prototype game to test it out. Um, and uh it's 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 not too bad um the one of the areas that i think godot is missing in 3d is like drawing debug stuff so i had to find an add-on to do that because mm -hmm. it was like it was pretty hard like with the explosions and stuff um i was like trying to figure out what was going wrong with my code and then like there, it was really hard to visualize what was happening because you know you're just kind of like running code that'll happen each frame in some instances yeah um, or just fire off really quickly. Um, and so I, I ended up having to install some, some debug stuff to kind of make sure my sphere was spawning in the right place and it was checking the correct spot and mm -hmm. like draw lines in 3D between certain points to make sure that it was trying to choose the correct points and measure between the correct things. Um, and, and Godot doesn't have some of that stuff built in for some reason, but the, that all works really well, so not a big deal. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because I think my biggest fear going into this, like I said, is just the coding aspect. I, mm -hmm. I, I know how to code, but I've just never implemented beyond printing stuff to the console. Like, I've had every single one of my college projects was, you know, oh, you want to find out how, you know, here's a credit card number. Tell me if it's American Express or Visa. It's like, okay, well, you know, there's... It's just kind of simple stuff, you, messing with arrays and all this other stuff. Like, there's not like too mm -hmm. too much to it. It was just kind of learning like fundamentals and and then learning after that some more advanced stuff. So like, I have all the fundamentals of coding down. But yeah, I'm interested to see when I start how it's gonna implement. And that's kind of why why I wanted to start with visual coding, because I know Godot doesn't even like offer that. Um, so that's why I'm asking. And this game is running on Godot, by the way. This project was made in Godot. So what was your strategy for starting the project? Meaning, when you first said, okay, I want to make a game and I have a vision for it, what was your first few steps? And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, let's see. First steps were really just, just writing down the ideas and like kind of coming up with the visual style and stuff we want to go for, which we haven't really talked much about. We can talk about later. Mm -hmm. Um, um, kind of, kind of coming up with, you know, hard lines on, Hey, we don't want this project to get too large. So we, we want to cut it off at this point, which is what caused us to decide Insta Gib. We knew we wanted to make something multiplayer, um, and this was like one of the simpler things we could do mm -hmm. uh, just to keep it from getting too large and taking five years. And, you know, it's really easy to do that. Um, but but yeah, other than that, it, it went back to the the getting getting Steam implemented was my first steps. I just I wanted to make sure I could get Steam implemented and I could connect to friends and, and run around as a little as a little bean. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I kind of kind of failed to do so in Unreal Engine. Um, I was able to, it, Unreal Engine has a lot of really cool multiplayer stuff built in, but I wasn't able to get the Steam side of things. And so I didn't really want to bother with setting up, like, I, I don't even remember what all I was going to need to do to get it set up mm -hmm. outside of Steam. But I wanted to use Steam to piggyback off of that. It's real simple. It's nice. Everyone has Steam that I know. So yeah, um, that's the only platform I really plan on releasing it on. So mm -hmm. it worked. Um, and that kind of leads into my next question, which is what was the barrier of entry? Like how much did, how much have you spent on this project and on what, if any? Oh, uh, like monetary wise. Yes. Um, let's see, have we spent anything on this yet? Uh, I don't think we spent anything on this project. I would Not say there there were a couple tools we bought in unreal engine in yeah. that we intended to use for another one mm -hmm. that were <laughs> decently expensive um uh like i got it on sale and it was still like two hundred dollars i think Dang. uh yeah no it wasn't it was the like a dungeon generator one because we were wanting to make a roguelike which is 
you know, still possibility for the future, <laughs> but we're focused on this one for now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't think we've really done any, put any monetary value. Um, I think the only thing I've really paid for, which is completely unnecessary is a subscription to writer, which is a C sharp code editor. Okay. Um, and that's just, uh, like I've actually swapped over to using visual studio now for mm-hmm. other reasons of it caused Valorant to crash. So, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, Vanguard, I my to beloved. Was it Vanguard? The, I imagine so. Oh, yeah, God. Probably. You do not. The Visual Studio. <laughs> Call me crazy, but you do not need kernel like cheat, anti cheat like that. That is like absurd. <laughs> probably not. It's probably a little overkill yeah. for what it's trying to do, but yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and Mason, did you did you have to? I mean, Blender. I know you use Blender, right? I do use Blender primarily, um, and I definitely do not pirate any Adobe <laughs> products at definitely all. Definitely not. Um, yeah, as you uh, as you should. And... Yeah. Um, right. But... So... Yeah. yeah, I guess the barrier to entry would be in that area. Mm-hmm. You can get good looking things out of Blender, but you're definitely going to want Substance Painter or Substance Designer, um, which are monthly subscriptions to Adobe, which is a, a demon of a company. Um, <laughs> and then a lot of yeah. people prefer sculpting in ZBrush over Blender, but I've kind of just used Blender entirely for sculpting at this point. Mm-hmm. And that's what my thumbnails were made into. You just kind of, kind of modeled, not modeled, but you, um, I yoinked that shit. You yoinked that shit. Yeah. <laughs> and just kind of move, move the arms and fingers and stuff like that in a pretty realistic way, which is actually a, a pretty hard skill that I, I could not do on my own. If I, if, even if you told me every single button to press, I probably would still, it wouldn't look as good as what you give me. I mean, I tried to guide cake, and that was a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a monumental task. I mean, yeah, you were. We were sitting in a call, and uh, for my first thumbnail, or for my first Blender thumbnail, we had uh, our friend Cake. Uh, I was trying to have him help me, and he had some like a little bit of Blender like experience. Um, it was for the Iron Man video where he's kind of just like holding out his arms, so I could have like items hovering above it and uh as simple as that sounded um we had a really hard time dude i tried doing that in gmod at first i booted up (laughs) gm uh construct i think or something like that and i was like oh yeah i'll just open it up and paint it and lasso tool it out or something like that (laughs) and um So yeah, and then we got Mason to help, and Mason is like, oh yeah, you want to hit Control shift s Control q like all this other, like, random (laughs) stuff. I, it was, it's amazing, like, there's a lot of skill that just goes into using these editors and, and, and programs, like, you could, you could charge for those services, which you do. Yeah, every single software has its own keybinds for, like, doing the exact same things that other things do. Yep. And it's... Uh, yep. A little bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, I'm an them. I'm an avid Paint Net user, but I recently got Adobe Creative Cloud, um, because I have like a student discount and stuff, and so mm-hmm. I downloaded Photoshop, and all the keybinds are just completely different. Like you can't yep. zoom in, you can't pan it with like Metal Mouse, you can't do like anything that I'm used to in Paint Net. So all I use Photoshop for now is to like. Because they have really good, um, they have a really good tool where you can just like p- click on a person. It's not like a magic wand, but it's like a better magic wand where you click on a person and it'll just you can outline that person like perfectly and like copy it. So I'll just copy it and put it in Paint Net. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but um, yeah, um, so no money spent on the game really um yeah weren't you saying something about uh about the footsteps did, did you have to pay for that or was that 
Or am I tripping? Oh, you're right. Actually, that that jogs my memory. I did actually buy a uh, a sound pack that was on Humble Bundle for like twenty five bucks. I think. Oh, okay. Uh, there a, you go. There's a whole pack of general game sounds, and there was a, a footstep plugin that came along with it as well. So I just slapped it on the character controller, and and you know. We got mm-hmm. footsteps in here now. I'll yeah. probably end up wanting to recode it because it's a little buggy. Um, like if you get slammed into the ground by a rocket, it'll play the footstep sound like ten times in a row. Oh jeez, <laughs> it kind of sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'll probably end up redoing that at some point. But mm-hmm. for now, it works. Yeah, and that's what all these like little materials are for that I've been jumping around. They all have like different little sounds. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all all just for testing the different ones in the yeah. pack. So yeah, um, well, you already kind of answered my my next question, which was why do you use Godot? So why don't we move on to um, when you were learning, like when you were learning in the game making process, like what was absolutely like, what was a great tool? Maybe not the best tool, but what was a great tool or resource that you kept falling back to? Maybe a YouTube channel or like a log or something shit like that like what did you was there anything like that that stuck out to you oh yeah so there's a i started out in unity a couple of years ago um and i kind of got on the on the like after he stopped youtube but brackies um that's the one pretty much everyone will probably tell you got got them into coding for unity and stuff and mm. you know as of you know a few years ago okay um his youtube channel super good um just real simple unity tutorials laid out um really good uh once i started getting a little more advanced there was a youtube channel which i think they've stopped uploading as well uh called infallible code um and and their stuff super good for just getting down like the general like principles of uh of like systems that you would code in a game right like Mm -hmm. when you want to use um a singleton uh versus you know not using a singleton um you know stuff like that i don't even know what that Um, is (laughs) i was gonna say that's not gonna make much sense to many people watching the video but yeah you know you know smaller more focused concepts like that on like when you want to be using certain things Mm -hmm. certain features of c sharp to do what because there's there's no real wrong way to make a game it's really just about like what ends up shipping at the end of the day but there are ways of doing it that make it much easier for you down the road and give you much less of a headache right i can't Mm -hmm. even imagine refactoring the uh what is the yandere simulator oh my god yeah i I I can't even imagine trying to touch that code so (laughs) those are that's an awesome video but he, he made a game he made yeah. a game with it. Yeah, he's and you gotta appara- respect I, it. I mean, he's apparently a terrible person and terrible person. Oh uh, yeah, he made a game. You know? he, he made a game, and I can't say the same, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Mason, well, like, so I obviously at some point will have to do art. It is just, yeah. it, it's either I can, I'm gonna try my best to do it, and luckily I'm doing a 2D game, so it shouldn't be you know, as hard as having to make a 3D model from scratch. Um, hopefully I can figure it out, but I feel like with zero art experience, can I even get something on paper or will I need to like spend hours and hours? Um, I mean, you'll definitely be able to get something, uh, <laughs> at least <laughs> representational of what's happening in the game, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, like old Flash games, like, I mean, their graphics really weren't great, but they still worked mm-hmm. and got the point across oh um, what's that one game uh is it cube runner fancy, or something fancy adventure. Like? Oh. oh no well fancy <laughs> fancy adventure is a good idea too like it's literally... actually that one has decent art that one's actually pretty good it yeah but it's pretty simple yeah i think i think my favorite 2d game to point to when people are like oh yeah your art has to be consistent is undertale mm, because yeah. All of the assets are like from just completely different perspectives, all in the same scene, and it's fine. Like nobody really cares that much about it because it's a good game. Yeah. Apparently, exactly. I haven't played it, but <laughs> really, <laughs> I, I have managed not to play it somehow. <laughs> what? That's like uh, not playing Fortnite ever in your life or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like on that scale, that's funny. <laughs> I'm a I'm a fake gamer. Yeah. So, uh, what? For you, Mason, then, would have been your biggest resource so far? 
Um, for 3D stuff, sure. probably flipped normals is my favorite resource or YouTube channel. Um, they do a lot of like fundamentals of design and stuff in 3D. Mm -hmm. Um, for 2D, there's a ton of great YouTube channels. Um, Cynix Design, uh, Ahmed Aldori. Um, oh, I always forget his name. He's very Italian. Um, Mark Bellucci, Mark. I think is the name. Okay. Um, yeah, most of my art experience outside of the few college classes I took um, has been straight up from YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. And probably the fastest way to learn is doing um, like figure studies and life studies. Um, those oh, are really? definitely like when I saw the fastest improvement in my like whenever I was first starting out in sketching and stuff. Um, okay, I'm I'm so sorry to cut you off. I think I just did this game's first ever sync jump. Holy! <laughs> <man. laughs> clip it, clip it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I mean that that was about the end of my thought. Um, mm -hmm. Just like daily short practice is probably the best way to improve quickly. Okay. Um, yeah. Like Thirty minutes a day, kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, and that also ties into my next question very well. But I do want to add that. Um, well, actually, no, I'll, I'll add this when I ask this question. So on the topic of time and how much time allocation you do, how much time or OK, here's a better question. How do you manage your time? I know that Matthew, you work a full time job. Mason, you do freelance work. So how do you kind of manage your time when making a game? Ooh, uh, are you wanting to go first, Mason, or me? Uh, you can go first. Okay. Um, uh, it's kind of tough. <laughs> um, really, I just have to prioritize my full-time job, to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to get fired <laughs> for for low production. Yeah, <laughs> um, obviously. That's the, that's the important part. If I don't have a job, I don't get to keep working on the game. So, you mm -hmm. know, um, I, uh, and, and it's one of those things where I'm, I really enjoy making the game. So I'm not really looking to replace my job with making the game. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I like having, I, I like having a, a solid job. The <laughs> industry is a little, little rocky at the moment, Yeah, but, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where I just, I, I, I get home after work. Um, if one of my friends wants to hang out or an online friend wants wants to play games, I'll <laughs> play with them a little bit and then mm -hmm. I'll I'll sometimes just do some coding like between rounds and Valorant or something. Oh, nice. um, you yeah. know, or just when I'm hanging out in the Discord call, mm -hmm. I'll do a lot of work. Um there's some days though where like I just want to focus on getting a feature done and it's like a kind of a complicated feature. So I just I'll just say, ah oh, no, I'm just gonna work on my game today, you know, mm -hmm. may play games later or something later. Yep. Um, and then there are some days where I literally will, I, I purposefully set a rule for myself cause I, I really enjoy making the game, but I have to really avoid burning myself out, mm -hmm. um, primarily for work. Um, because if I, if I were to come home every single day, um, and work on it and then work on it every single weekend day, mm -hmm. I think I'd burn myself out pretty fast. And I have a couple yeah. times in the past, just learning stuff, um, I'm at a point of knowledge on making games. It's been a couple of years now that I'm not, I'm not hurting my brain every day when I'm trying to make games. I kind mm -hmm. of have a good grasp of what I need to do to accomplish what I'm doing. Um, it's still tough and I'm not like the best at it or anything, right. but it's a, it's a lot easier now that I've learned a lot of it after a couple of years now. I don't have to think as hard about it. Yeah. That makes sense to me. I feel like, getting into it is the hardest part. And then once you once you kind of have an idea of what's going on, you know there's very clear steps on how to learn. Like when I started YouTube, it was like, what what do I even do? Like, where do I even start? But then you start going like, oh, well, I can make a thumbnail better. I can make this title better. I can I can make my intro better. Like, and then it, it just kind of falls into place similar to, you know, I'm comparing YouTube to game making. But I feel like 
that's how it's going to be when I start. It's going to be really hard at first, and then it's going to be like, okay, I kind of get the hang of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and as you as you do the the different aspects over and over, you'll get more confident, and eventually, you know, there's only really so many. Uh, concepts that you really need to put well okay that's a really probably a bad way of putting it i was gonna say there's only so many like things you need to know in game dev but wait i got stuck in a really weird way (laughs) yeah i uh i got the donut oh yeah the uh i've replaced the physics engine okay so the default physics engine in godot is not great for 3d um so i'm I've actually replaced it with Jolt. This is still on like my local computer. Mm-hmm. The one right now uploaded to Steam, the one that we're playing on, is still on the old physics engine. But uh-huh. as far as I can tell, the new physics engine solves that issue. So, Got it. but yeah, there's a there's a bunch of weird places you can get stuck. You can get stuck on this donut too. Yeah, here I'm stuck. <laughs> I can't get out. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah. Anyways, once you once you kind of get your 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 tool belt of, you know, of design options kind of fleshed out, it, it becomes a lot easier. There's there's similar things that you can apply from one feature implementation to the next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how about you, Mason? How do you how do you manage your time? Uh, <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> Let's just say business is slow. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm playing games. I'm uh, I'm doing chores around the house. I'm uh. Oh yeah, he's a male wife. Bit, oh, I'm a bit of a male wife. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, <laughs> the dream. Um, it is the dream, honestly. I want to be a a YouTube YouTube male wife. My wife comes home <laughs> no. after her long nursing long day of being a nurse and i'm just in there playing fucking rainbow six siege making youtube videos slamming your keyboard <laughs> <laughs> no but uh, and i don't i don't know if you mentioned i forget at this point uh but me and mason are brothers so oh yeah i totally forgot so to and, and we yeah <laughs> that's kind of a big thing um and and you know mason mason lives in in my my house so uh, you know, him contributing to a ton of the chores. Also, you know, it makes it to where I don't have to do as much of that side of things. I can, mm-hmm. I can kind of mostly get home and just kind of work on this and not have to worry too much about chores. I still try and help out yeah. as much as I possibly can. But but it is really helpful, like not having to like just worry about the trash and stuff oh. like that, you know. That was sick. You guys just killed each other at the exact same time. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um so I guess the moral of the story, like that I kind of the point that I wanted to get to audiences when you are working on passion projects and stuff, a lot of people will use the excuse that they don't have time for it. That's that's a very common thing that I hear is, you know, oh, I want to do this, but I just don't have time for it. When in reality, you can create something. I mean, even this like people might not even think that making this right here is possible. Because they just don't, they haven't even started. They haven't even sunk their toes into it yet. But the rea- oh, oh, I thought you air shot me. Uh, but the reality <laughs> is that you can just work on a game or any project for 30 minutes, even five minutes a day. Like you can work on something very minimally a day, like with a very busy schedule and you can create a product eventually. So that's why I kind of wanted to to tease that question a bit is because, you know, I think that as long as you're improving something like every week or every month or every day, like at least 1%, it, it was a very, very productive day, you know? Yeah, for yeah. sure. That That's, that's, that's a, that's a pretty good way of putting it. I think, I think it doesn't, you know, don't focus so much on what you're getting done that day. Just focus on doing something that day. And mm-hmm. make a little bit of progress. Yep. You were gonna say yeah, something. Was, yeah. Um, progress is not linear. This is something <laughs> that you know pretty much everyone learned, but it's mm-hmm. definitely something you want to repeat to yourself <laughs> occasionally. Like, yeah. Sometimes you're gonna get a shit ton done in five minutes, and sometimes it's gonna like Matthew was fixing a bug, which 
wasn't even a bug with their code. It was um, there was like a little checkbox that yep. they didn't realize they had unchecked at one point, <laughs> and they spent a week debugging that. Oh my god. Um, yep. <laughs> but, that was a painful. <laughs> That's but awful. I mean, it was, it was still progress. It just yeah. took longer than other bits of progress, and it, it's sometimes it's very easy to to feel like um, the progress you made that day wasn't nearly enough, mm -hmm. but. It's still progress. Yeah, I mean, if you can if you can learn a little trick or a new shortcut on your application, or if you you know working towards something like even if it might seem fruitless, like it it's still productive. You're still working towards your dreams, and that's kind of like the whole purpose of you know making these games in the first place is because you know we all love games. So, and I feel like making a game has been a dream of like so many other people. It's a very common thing to say, like, you know, I feel like people watching this video, I feel like at least one out of 10 people have a have have an idea for a video game that they would have wanted wanted to make, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that kind of, you know, uh, leads into my next question, obviously, is um, for people that are wanting to get into it, like myself, what is and this doesn't have to be revolutionary this doesn't have to this can be any any magnitude but what advice do you have for people going into game making um you want to talk about our side of things mason or do you want me to go uh if you have something on lock i'm still thinking <laughs> um I think the the general advice I kind of like to give, and it's it's one that I heard a bunch, and then also one that I I didn't improve a ton until I started following this advice. Um, and it's really just make make some make a bunch of small stuff, right? Like I think I think it's fine to uh, like Larry here is going to focus on like one project for a little while mm -hmm. um, to to grasp some stuff, um, and I think that's fine when you're like first learning using a game engine in general and all that um but what really skyrocketed my learning was just making a bunch of different small different kinds of games that are just mm -hmm. completely different from the other you just really expand you know i see yeah. what you're learning and so, so really you know the gist of it is just just get in there and make make something small right mm -hmm. don't make a, make, a, make a little make a little guy move around right don't don't worry about animating him don't worry about making it online don't worry about even shooting a gun yet or damaging another person or an enemy or whatever right just just make a guy move around yeah right or that's, that's that. even even simpler than that make make like a clicker game you know like make an incremental like little i press the button a few times I spend I spend the button clicks that I made and I bought something, you know, just yeah, 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 no, exactly. yeah. One of the uh, one of the first small games I made in Godot um, was literally just like this little tiny like little like fake test game that you like kind of just went through and like clicked different answers. And so I was just testing like, you know, getting basic scripts working, getting the UI working, getting different branches of logic going based on which button you pressed. Right. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing too complicated. Yeah. And Mason? Uh, another bit of advice, uh, in addition to progress isn't linear, and it's pretty related to that, is it's going to look like shit before it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> and you just kind of have to accept that. Like, everyone yes. makes art that looks like shit before they make art that looks good. Yep. And it is very difficult to look at old art, but that's okay because <laughs> the next piece is better yeah absolutely um looking back on old code is pain yeah <laughs> and that you know i kind of want to talk about I, i've talked about my strategy before and yeah i know that the best path would be for me to take this advice and say you know okay i'm gonna make a clicker game i'm gonna make this i'm gonna make that and uh, you know I, I still haven't really decided yet i'm going to jump head first into this project and if i think i'm hitting a wall then i'm definitely gonna go and like take a few steps back and just like try and make some easier stuff so i don't you know the 30 video like challenge that i've like set up for myself could be a little unrealistic but i also i can make videos as long as i want spend as long as i want on it but 
my goal is just to get like absolute fundamentals down. I just want my char I just want my character to step on the ground first, you know, and not fall through the map. I want my character to walk forward and backwards or just move and then mm -hmm. like maybe eventually jump, you know. Thankfully I took physics, so hopefully that that helps a little bit and like <laughs> and stuff. Um but yeah, that's kind of just my goal. You know, I keep talking about how big my ambitions are for this game, <laughs> but I want people to know that I'm very realistic in thinking about the direction and how long it's going to take. I've mentioned in my previous videos, it's going to take me like probably two years plus to make even close to what I want to make. But it's the process of making something somewhat close to what I want to make that would make me happy. So, um... With all that said, do you guys have any uh, have any final words? Any closing statements? Mm, not really. Uh, but I, I just besides encouraging anyone who has even thought about it before, I think I think you should make games. I think you should try to make games, even if you don't end up finishing a game or end up liking it. I think you know you know you don't like it at that point, right? Yeah, it, you won't know until you try. Exactly, and that's, that's true for everything. So. Yeah, that's about it. Mason, you got anything else? Uh, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Have fun. GLHF. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for your time. Always love Absolutely. talking about this stuff. And I will be using it. I'll be asking like a million questions when I start. So be ready for oh, that. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, and then uh is the steam page up for this game at all or is... Ooh, not yet, not yet. <laughs> okay, okay as you can see the this the visual state of the game doesn't make for good steam right yeah, yeah. Yet. So, so uh, we're waiting to get a little bit of art in there before we really get a steam page going okay but... so when that time comes I'll, I'll i'll probably make another video about it and you guys can wishlist it if you're interested um oh we didn't even really talk about like well maybe you don't want to share that the the mechanics that would make this game more like unique but mm, we, I mean, can, we, we, we can we can we can go more into it if we want to but i think at this point it wouldn't yeah yeah we can it talk would... about that um in another time but uh mm -hmm. yeah any anything you guys want to plug mm. Mason, i don't know i know you do i might, I might post some stuff on twitter um let me let me remind myself of my Twitter handle. I changed it uh, not too long ago. I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Yeah, it's a uh, void underscore adjacent on Twitter. I might I might post some clips of my uh, my development if you want to if you want to mm -hmm. follow along with this. Mason, I know you want to plug. <laughs> yeah, I got a I got a website. I'm kind of professional with it. Uh, oh, my website looks like shit right now, but. <laughs> It will look better at some point once I'm not lazy about it and actually fix it. Um, yeah, that's a. Uh, oh, what even is the link? I'll put it in the description this. if you guys want yeah, to look yeah, at yeah. it. Don't it's worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's yeah. <laughs> HTTPS forward slash slash www dot slash localhost. <laughs> whoa! 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 Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to dox you. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys again for your time. And that's Absolutely. it. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.